before we start, do you have insurance? Hey everybody, it's Gamer Gramps here. You're gonna be leaving this video knowing exactly how to easily found four cities before turn 40 with Caesar, so you can absolutely crush your next domination game. My videos are timestamped so you can jump straight to where you want and don't have to listen to me ramble. All right, so first things first, city planning time. Things you want to look for are luxury resources to settle on, preferably ones with faith, so you can hopefully get the settler pantheon, high food yields for that faster population growth, or culture is always nice too, as it helps you get down the civic tree faster, but more importantly, helps your borders expand faster, which saves you money from having to buy as many tiles to chop your armies out a little bit later. Now again, these are just a few things to look out for, so if you need more help in this this area leave a comment on the video and ask any questions that might be troubling you and I can reply or if there's enough interest I'll just make a video remember that moving isn't a bad thing at all if your city is gonna be that much better I'm okay with a turn four or five settle in a standard speed game if my spawn and location is that bad although obviously you want to avoid this if you can today I'm gonna take you through this thing step by step showing you a build order you can start with and then tweak it for yourself depending on your play style and the map spawn you get we're gonna cover the overall strategy and reason we're opening up like this talk about the perfect pantheon but then what the realistic best options are after the game crushes your soul and you inevitably miss out on your free settler not only is the strategy just that good it's also that consistent so if you're in it for the long haul and are willing to spend some extra time with me after we cover the things i just told you about i'll run this back three different times with a lot of editing involved so you can see for yourself again and again how easy this is is, but also how easy it is to handle yourself when you spawn with a neighbor sieve so close you can spit on them or what happens when you have a rough spawn and you don't get a city settled until turn three or later because you have to move buckle up and I'll show you step by step just how easy this is so you can try it out for yourself in your next game before we get started here you should take a quick second to like the video this way you train YouTube to let it know you like watching content about the games you play and you definitely want to get better better at them faster. Better yet, feel free to leave me a comment too while you're at it. That would definitely help a small channel like me grow. And clearly, if you know anything about me, I need all the help I can get. Once you have your capital founded, start up a scout immediately. You want to get out and explore as much territory as fast as you can because you're essentially in a mad dash to find barbarian camps. Having the extra movement from scouts, especially when they get a promotion or two, definitely comes in handy for body blocking warriors from city states or jumping in at the last minute to snipe the barb camp from them. That's not even mentioning that with Caesar's ability, Veni Vidi Vici, pretty sure that's how you say it anyway, you get plus five combat strength bonus when fighting barb. So it's like all of your units come with a free discipline policy card. Plus they always earn normal experience when fighting barbarians. So that's another fucking crazy sick bonus. But the real icing on the cake is you get plus 300 gold whenever you conquer a city for the first time or when you earn gold from a barbarian outpost. It just snowballs so hard, it's absolutely disgusting in the best possible way. Not to mention, while we're here covering his other abilities, you got all roads lead to Rome. Okay, you can fucking read. So pause it here if you want to go over the exact wording of this, but basically every single city that you create, if it's in, within range of your capital, you get a road to it and you have a trade route, which gives you extra gold when you send trade routes past it. We have the Legion, which is like a swordsman on crack that can fucking chop tiles in order to get you more of an army fast so you don't have to have as many builders as you go. Their unique district of Bath is also great for building bigger cities and you'll want to take advantage of that in the mid and late games. But anyways, we're getting way too far ahead of ourselves. So let's keep things simple and jump back to what we were talking about before I went off on this tangent about Caesar and his all powerful abilities. Tech wise, you should head straight for animal husbandry in most situations, unless your spawn has you in a location where you'd be better off going for mining first. Either way, you should either open animal husbandry into mining or vice versa. The reason I'd recommend taking animal husbandry first in most situations is that it reveals horses on the map, which are automatic nice tiles to work even if they aren't improved yet, which can boost your capital, but also makes finding an optimal second city location even easier. Not to mention, the added bonus of getting them up online fast lets you sell them to other sieves when you aren't using them, which helps you to buy tiles or whatever else you're trying to do 
that much faster. In a civic tree, you should go for foreign trade first. This is because one, it's the easier of the first two civics to get the inspiration for, as you literally just have to find another continent. And this whole build revolves around scouting that map early and fast to find barb camps. But two, in a worst case scenario, where you somehow don't manage to find enough camps to clear or raid, this also helps you get to early empire faster, which then gives you a 50% production boost to settlers so you can hopefully still salvage your game without too much trouble. After your first scout finishes, I like to immediately go for a second scout here. However, arguments could be made that going back to back slingers would be the better choice. The reason I personally lean towards the second scout, unless I have an enemy sieve right on my doorstep, is that I like to have two separate groups for hunting barb camps. My first scout teams with my warrior and I use the second scout with the slinger. This slinger scout combo is so effective because nine times out of 10, you don't even have to kill the barb in the camp in order to harvest it. You simply move your slinger within sight range and the barb gets a hard on and chases out after your slinger. And then you just have to take advantage of your scouts added movement and zip in quick. So you can then either clear the camp or raid it to get that gold even faster. As we discussed, you should pick mining or animal husbandry next, depending on your map. And then for civics, you should actually work on craftsmanship after you either get foreign trade or have it researched to the point where it just needs to be boosted. This is because we want to get to state workforce quickly to get started on our government plaza. But also having the Ilkham policy card for the plus 30% production boost to builders is nice to slot in after getting your Pantheon. Not to mention a Goge is great to have in a pinch if you get bum rushed by a neighboring sieve. By this point, you've most likely found your first barb camp and have been able to either clear it if you're playing the base game or raid it if you're playing with barbarian clan mode. Now, I personally love this clan mode and play it pretty much all the time, no matter what sieve I am, but that's clear Clearly my preference, so just know that if it isn't your particular bread and butter, that's fine. The strategy is basically just as effective without it, playing with the vanilla gathering storm. By scouting so much territory early and having your scouts promoted fast, you can rush through the terrain easier as soon as the new barb camp spawns, so you have a good chance to cash in on any that end up spawning around your starting area. On the subject of scouting, you're really hoping to find a religious city state to get a first meet bonus on them, so you can then start earning more faith and get Get your pantheon unlocked faster. First meet bonuses on other types of city states are also nice. However, if you earn a free envoy from a goodie hut, I'd hold it in reserve in case you find a religious city state, but don't get the first meet bonus with them. For your research path, after mining, you head straight for bronze working. Not only do we want to find iron on the map so that hopefully our third or fourth cities can settle near some if we don't already have access to it, we want our encampment started as soon as possible in the capital so that the timing works out and we get the inspiration inspiration for state workforce, which is to build any district. Having said that, you probably already figured out that after craftsmanship, we're heading straight for the state workforce fork in the civic tree. The exception to this rule would be if somehow you hadn't managed to clear or raid any barb camps yet, and you needed to prioritize unlocking the colonization policy card, which you get with early empire, but I honestly haven't run into that problem yet, so I'd have to cross that bridge if I eventually got to it. So as soon as you have your first barb camp either cleared or raided, you instantly buy by your first settler and immediately send it on its way towards a good spot for your second city. Things to look for when choosing this location is obviously fresh water, but also pasture locations and marshes are good things to have in mind. Because after your soul's crushed and you find out that the free settler pantheon has already been taken, 9 out of 10 times, Lady of the Reeds and Marshes and God of the Open Sky are still sitting there waiting for you to choose and are definitely powerhouse choices for this strategy. That's as much detail as I'm going to get into about settling strategies. But again, if that's something that you're struggling with and you want more help, just ask questions down below and I'm happy to answer there or make a video if there's enough interest. When you found your second city, you want to start working on a monument there right away. This is because the plus two culture you'll get from it is crazy powerful in the early game when it's such a big increase compared to your overall culture output at this point. Plus, think of the bigger picture in domination games. You want to get the state workforce to unlock your government plaza. The reason for this being it's going to give you your third governor title, which allows you to get the black marketeer promotion for Magnus that essentially lets you chop out units for basically no strategic resource. You want to get to military tradition to get your flanking bonuses, plus the maneuver policy card, 
as well as Stratego's for the plus two great general points. By getting military tradition first, you can slot it in as soon as you get to political philosophy. By getting military tradition first, you get to your flanking and combat support bonuses faster, plus you have the maneuver policy card available if you want it earlier, considering there's a little bit of a gap before you get to political philosophy since it has such a high culture requirement since it's a classical era option. So after you've unlocked political philosophy, you're going to want to head towards military training next. This is important because you're going to unlock your raid policy card. This is unbelievably powerful. And then after that, you literally just click on mercenaries and that's all there is to it. You want to get here as soon as humanly possible because getting the professional army policy card for that 50% gold discount on all your unit upgrades is absolutely crazy. And to take it a step further, if you want to go later into the game after mercenaries is under your belt, then you're going to want to head towards things that allow you to get cores and armies. So you want to head down towards nationalism to get those unlocked as quickly as you can. Now that you have your double scout and slinger finished or single scout double slinger if that's the path you chose you want to start working on a settler in the capital right away while this is going on you'll usually be able to raid or clear at least one more barb camp and considering you haven't bought any tiles yet you can actually afford the 440 bucks needed to purchase a second settler for yourself this is essentially where you have to make the decision though if you're on a lower difficulty level and not on deity i would suggest saving the money until you unlock your pan Pantheon and see if religious settlements is there for the free settler. That way, if it is, there's settler number three and your capital will finish building the settler you've been working on for your fourth city and you're set, which then leaves you a boatload of gold to buy slingers or builders if you feel like it, spend some on better tiles, save it for upgrading warriors into legions or some combination of all of these. Hell, you could even decide to open five cities if you really had the terrain to warrant it and buy yourself another settler. However, on deity, I'd suggest you just take the plunge and buy the settler right away so you have it that much quicker. Chances are you won't be getting religious settlements for the free settler so you should plan not to and be pleasantly surprised if you do. Even if you do get it, an argument could be made that it would be better to actually just buy the settler and choose one of the pantheons we mentioned if your map justifies the decision. So whether you get it from the pantheon or buy it with gold, that's settler number three and when your capital finishes the settler there, it'll be used for your fourth city. When you're finished with the settler in the capital, start working on a monument there next for the boost to culture, which is important for the reasons we already covered, and your capital will be able to build it reasonably fast. Plus, timing-wise, chances are you're still a few more turns away before finishing bronze working and getting to start work on your encampment. When founding your third and fourth cities, I would start working on a builder right away in most cases. The reason for this being that you want to start chopping out your army as quickly as possible as soon as you get Magnus established in the capital and have the black marketeer promotion which you'll be getting as soon as you finish constructing the government plaza and have got an early empire in the civics tree to accomplish this most effectively and get your troops out as quickly as you can you want to basically swarm whatever city magnus happens to be in at the time with builders so you can make all your chops and then rotate them to the next city before rinsing and repeating this again and again however an argument can be made that taking the time to also build a monument before starting builder production in your third and fourth cities could also be worth the investment of time. In fact, I'd actually definitely choose to do this if I have an enemy civilization that is very close to me so that my first army doesn't have to travel as far before starting the war. But if I have a long way to go before attacking my first victim, I would opt for the builders instead just to have my timing attack hit that much quicker and that much harder. I guess now would be a good time to talk about how to pick your first victim. You know, assuming the choice wasn't made for you by a neighboring civ declaring war on you first. In that case, most times the closer the better as your legions are going to hit faster and could do more damage before you have to get a batting ram to support them to deal with walls. However, I'd also suggest you consider targeting a sieve that has a high science rate as long as it's not too far away. This is because they're going to out-tech you pretty quickly if left to their own devices, so it's good to hit them before they're overflowing with crossbows to rain on your parade and make life that much more difficult. This choice gives you an added bonus of being able to pillage their campuses as you go, which you 
help boost your own path down the tech tree so you can unlock your next unit upgrade faster, which would be getting to industrialization so you can upgrade your legions into man at arms. So that gives you some ideas for making the right choice as far as your early game victims and a little bit of a direction to head in tech wise since we already covered your early game civic path in detail earlier in the video. I hope you found this early game Caesar strategy to be helpful and I haven't wasted your time. Let me know in the comments down below one if you've tried this strategy before, how it went and on what difficulty you were playing at the time, two if you suggest doing anything differently than I talked about and three how fast you normally win your average domination game when playing with a standard size map and time settings plus no crazy game modes that change everything like the heroes or monopoly ones. The reason I'm especially curious about this last part is that I learned this strategy from watching a Chinese player do it on Billy Billy which is essentially Chinese YouTube. He used this strategy to start out his game and ended up winning in less than a hundred turns. This is the second game of his now that I've watched recently where he's won in less than a hundred turns on deity with standard time and map size without cheesy game modes enabled and I'm blown away by how insane that is at least for me I don't know. My next full length video is going to be a deep dive into his whole game strategy where I break everything down step by step in a highly edited analysis of all the moves he made that helped him win. I'll pin a link at the top of the comment section for this video if you're interested in checking out for yourself. In the meantime though if you want to carry on with me here in this video we're now going to roll the clock back and I'll start with a brand new game and we'll show you how this works with some actual gameplay. Then I'll do it two more times so you can see how easy it is to consistently achieve these kinds of results and what you can do to alter the build if your map calls for it like I do in the third attempt where I don't settle until turn three and end up starting builder first since I had such a bad start spawn compared to these others. If you are coming along for the ride, don't worry. These playthroughs will be highly edited, so you won't be stuck here all day watching this video with me. All right, nice. So we got a first meet on a religious city state there. And now you might be wondering why in God's name I would move away from the banana tile. And that's because we were on the grassland hill tile, which meant if I settled in place, we'd essentially lose the production on that. By moving over one, we get the 2-2 base production in this city. And we saved the production from that tile. Plus, we're not far away from the 3-2 tile we'd be working to begin with. We'll just either expand there naturally which it looks like that's what they're doing, or we'd buy that tile if it came down to it once we cross 50 gold. Nice, we got a first meet there too with a science city state, so that's definitely something. They could give us a little bit of boost of science there, we're not going to complain. Alright, so here I'm choosing this location for my second city because it has fast growth, not to mention it unlocks another luxury resource for us, which is nice, but also it's going to give us access to these horse tiles, or at least a good chance to get them, which we'll be able to keep out of the hands of the Egyptians, not to mention, I mean, clearly starting this close to a DD AI, we're going to war, so... I'd like to ideally get a head start on that and restrict them from getting access to the strategic resources here. Not to mention to the 
added growth from the sugar tile will actually allow us to have a head start when it comes to combating their loyalty pressure. Nice, there we go. That is a sweet, sweet sound if I ever heard one. So we'll just go ahead and start making our moves on the barbarians right away. I'm still gonna go with survey here. The reason being is I wanna get my scouts upgraded as humanly possible. Not to mention, it's not gonna be that long before we can get to our next, not to mention, it's not gonna be that long until we can get to our next civic here to just go ahead and switch. So ideally I'd like to get both scouts upgraded before that happens and then we'll switch into discipline. Because in a perfect world, we're going to be able to sit here and farm this camp real quick, but we'll also be able to find another camp somewhere which we could harvest for gold as well. And having the scouts get upgraded quick is the easiest way to do that as efficiently as possible. Do keep in mind, before I forget to mention it as well, that we automatically have a discipline policy card. Like, because we're playing as Caesar, we have the plus five combat strength against barbarians. Right there, when targeting barbarians, receive plus five combat strength and always earn normal XP. So we're immediately going to buy a settler in our city here for 320 gold. Alright, so we found another barbarian over here, which hopefully his camp isn't too far away. We're actually going to let him hit us. We'll just fortify ahead of time to take less damage. And there's the camp. Alright, good to know. So actually what we'll do is pull back one more tile and fortify here. Okay, so here we are. We got our Pantheon decently early because of the extra faith from the religious city-state there. So let's take a look and look at that. Religious settlements is actually available for us. Now, this really isn't usually the case. So we are definitely going to take advantage of it. And that is the dream right there. That's the Pantheon that you want. Hands down, no question asked. Um... But again, most times this isn't going to be there if you are playing on deity level. So just take it as a pleasant surprise like this was, but plan accordingly. So normally if that wasn't there, I would be looking at Lady of the Reeds and Marshes as a great one, especially if you have a few marshes around to make it worthwhile. I think honestly, anything over three marshes within your first few cities is worth it. Like, think about it, right? Where there's like 
the one here fertility rights okay the 10 percent growth rate is decent it, it's good don't get me wrong but the big grand prize is the builder in your capital right and you got to think about that that that's not that much production in the grand scheme of things especially in the early game to get a builder so say it's 50 production for the builder which you could negate with if you had an ill policy card etc etc whereas if you have three tiles that are marshes in your first couple of cities that's six production for the rest of the entire game right it doesn't go away it doesn't get limited like the god of the forge is only for ancient and classical units so once that time's gone by it doesn't exist anymore right so yeah lady of the reeds and marshes is a really strong pick in a lot of cases and so is god of the open sky as well as goddess of the festivals depending on the map and those are both usually there um fertility rights for the builder in the capital isn't a bad choice necessarily either because it can it's a good way to get you the three tiles improved really quickly so that you can get the boost towards craftsmanship but again the the holy grail that you're after pantheon wise is religious settlement so we're gonna go ahead and take that right away which then actually frees up our money because i was holding on to cash in case we had to buy our next settler but now that we know that we don't we're actually going to come here and we're going to buy up those two horse tiles there to secure them from egypt right away and while i don't have an exact location in mind yet for our third city it's going to be somewhere in here i'm just going to find out exactly where with the scout so we'll go ahead and start getting the settler to head over that way now Meanwhile here, we did get our promotion with our scout. And I like the ranger promotion because the, there seems to be a lot more flat land with forest than forested hills. So it's just, it comes in useful more often, I find. And now that he did that, we'll go ahead and kill him, which will give us even more experience. And meanwhile, what we're actually doing is heading over with our slinger because we're going to tempt the barb out of the camp when it sees our slinger. And we're going to try and grab that camp real quick with our scout and raid it for the cash too. So the warrior popped out to chase our slinger and we'll run in with the scout. And there you go. As you can see, we are in very good position here to move forward we're gonna have our four city well the settler out for it here in two turns meanwhile we're up to 728 gold so we're gonna take advantage of this fact and buy ourselves a couple builders here and we'll also go ahead and pick up a couple slingers to save ourselves 
some gold, or sorry, to save ourselves some production. So you can see here that the inevitable war with Egypt looks like it's about to start soon. So we're just going to accept this fact and lean into it. We'll start stop archery with one turn left, which will allow us to get a couple more slingers out. And then we'll switch to archery once we have some cash. Or sorry. And then once we've gotten a couple more slingers out, we'll go ahead and take archery so we can upgrade them as soon as we have the cash to. Now that we have our settler out in the capital, we'll want a monument. All right, so normally here, I would try to just settle the city to get rid of the camp and go from there. However, this is only a one charge builder. I'm more than happy to take the loss. So what I'm gonna try to do is actually lure this warrior out of his camp to steal my builder next turn. In which case, I will then move my scout onto the, oh wait, that wouldn't work because I wouldn't be able to move across the river. Oh, I got excited for nothing. I wouldn't be able to move across the river and raid the village. Actually, I guess I could. I would just have to move my settler away to safety and then settle the city a turn or two later. Yeah, we'll give this a shot here and see just for the shits and giggles whether we can pull this off or not.
All right, so here now we're gonna wanna go ahead and put in the Ilkum Pulse card for production against builders. And we're swapping out a discipline and into a go gate just in case Egypt does declare war on us. And that way we can make military units a little bit faster. But in the meantime, we will wanna be starting to work on our encampment district. So we gotta go ahead and buy a tile for that encampment district. And this one's on the way Egypt, but it's 85 bucks. But this one here sort of defends us from them. So I think we'll go with the 55 desert hill tile for our encampment. All right, so we're going to see if this will work here. got scared and is gonna stay in there so that's fine too what we'll do is just hang around here we'll leave our builders sleeping and we'll put this off just for a couple more turns nothing too crazy honestly I probably wouldn't do this if it wasn't just for me making this video for shits and giggles I would probably just say fuck it and settle the city however if we can do some ninja shit here and end up sniping this barb camp for 330 bucks I mean, why not, right? It'll be entertaining at the very least, but we'll go ahead and put the settler on, on sleep there for now. And basically we're body blocking this warrior with our builder. So they only have like the two slots to attack the camp from, and it's going to take them at least three to kill the camp. So we might be able to ninja in there with our scout and take them out. <laughs> I mean, I'm not holding my breath, but again, for shits and giggles, why not, right? It's worth a shot. All right, so again, we're okay waiting here because they can't kill it in one more shot. It's gonna take two more attacks with the warrior. So they might switch out those warriors, maybe not, or they move this one down. Either way, we'll wait to find out. Not to mention, our slingers getting close into the action too, where next turn we might be able to double tap it with a slout, with a slout, with a slinger and scout for the kill. Ooh, Jesus, two population losses. That's painful. All right, so we're just gonna stay here. They won't be able to move and attack the same turn. So this warrior will hit it and not kill it. And then we'll kill it with our scout and slinger and then if they, for whatever reason, they don't attack, we should still be able to double attack and kill it. But I'm not 100% sure on that. So we'll try and let it work out this way. Fuck, that hurts. <laughs> Ouch. Good thing we do have high food to grow back nice and healthy. All right, so next turn, we'll start an encampment here for the city. So in the meantime, we'll just put a turn into a builder there and we'll start with a trader there in our third city we'll build this to boost irrigation too on the corn there okay here we go ninja mode enabled in there so next turn we'll raid it and then we'll settle the city <laughs> i'm taking far more enjoyment out of this than i probably should be all right so we enjoy our 330 bucks and now we settle our city Okay, there we go. So we're three turns late. We didn't have them all settled before turn 40 like normal, but it is what it is. 
we did it for shits and giggles and now we have 390 bucks well 330 extra bucks to play with and it won't take us long to get this city up to speed here a little bit and we can spend some of that money on it to show it a little bit of love but okay so that this is re-roll one we're just immediately gonna hit restart and do this all over again all right so so far this is the first one where we haven't had the best of starts but that's okay because it doesn't take that long to go ahead and move to a little bit better location All right, so return three settling on the Plains Hill for the 2-2 base of production. And we're going to be working the high production t tile in order to make up for the couple turns that we missed by moving here. However, I think because of this setup and the fact that we don't have a lot of God tier tiles to work, that I'm actually going to change it a little bit. And I'd open with a builder this turn or this time before going for the scouts and slingers just to get this farm up and run, running which will probably expand over here too and the truffles which will allow us to get craftsmanship earlier etc etc so that's why we're making the change this time around but the overall concept is still gonna still the same All right, first meet, Culture City State, we'll take it. Persia for a close neighbor, probably not the best, but I mean, who cares, really? Nice, we got new population and discovered a second continent to boost foreign trade. Okay, nice. We got an early meet on the religious city state. Turn 12. That is definitely what we like to see. All right, they're all going up that way. I'm assuming there's a barb camp they're chasing. Actually, you know what? We're going to take our scout and head over there and see if we can block these guys off and take advantage. We want to try and beat them. <laughs> beat them to the punch if we can. Oh, shit. All right. Well, actually, I think we'll at least be able to block out the bottom half of their troops there. And then hopefully we can just time this out properly. All right. Takes four hits with the warrior. So we want to let them hit first because it would go them, us, them for the third time, and we'd be the fourth with either one of our troops. And then they don't attack, of course. <laughs> I mean, that just makes sense, right? So fuck it, whatever, we'll get the ball going. There you go. It's a party. Meanwhile, Actually, I, instead of going to the west, I wonder if we can just ninja this. Can we block them out? No, right? No, that won't work. Because we can get there, but we'd have to wait to cross. So they'd still be able to cross there. If we move there, they'd move here. I guess we could double block them, right? Shift everything over. Yeah, you know what? Let's try to fucking ninja this. Why not? Just for shits and giggles. <laughs> Meanwhile, we finished our second scout there. So we're going to go with the slinger in the cap. Yeah, that's right. Fuck you, buddy. Nice. And they popped us out a slinger, too, so we can farm experience off that. So I think we shift. And shift here. And then next turn, we can go across with that scout. And we'll double team this slinger here. I think the right move is just to fortify, because 
I'm pretty sure I would get double attacked. Otherwise. Oh, fuck's sakes. Oh. <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. All right, whatever. Okay. We're going in there. We're going there. And the barbarian goes after they do anyway. So that's fine. Even if it kills my scout, we can just move the other scout in there after that. All right. Rip scout. But your service was important. Meanwhile, let's just go ahead and buy a scout here. To work as a team with our slinger there. We're going to foreign trade next there. Meanwhile, we're happy to leave things in the way they are right now. Take the money. Buy our first settler. In the meantime, we don't really have the best of location for a second city figured out yet. I think we're going to go west anyway, since we're heading that way with our slinger and scout we'll have plenty of backup in the meantime we finished the slinger so we'll start on our settler there all right we got the pantheon and of course our soul is crushed as always <laughs> we don't really have a whole hell of a lot of the map figured out at this point there's really not many marshes that we can see there's not that many locations for campuses that we can see meanwhile there are no not madawa would have that we'd have to conquer them i just realized there's a goodie hut there too that i didn't notice but yeah i think this th this time around i would go with god of the forge here for the production boost there because we just really don't know if there's going to be that many more marshes there's them over here but there's no fresh water and we have a couple horses horses horse years <laughs> we have a couple horses for pastures here and i guess the sheep but nothing that's like slapping my face like hey there's a lot of potential here for it so i think in this case we we do just take the god of the forge Right. <laughs> that clown went ahead and attacked us. So we'll just go ahead and attack him back there. <coughs> <coughs> Meanwhile, we'll definitely take our promotion with the scout before getting this good hut. So again, we're going with the ranger promotion. I just think it's the better choice. It helps you get around faster. It's easier to avoid hills until you do manage to get your scout double upgraded. And now that we have foreign trade, I'm going to actually go early empire in case for whatever reason we can't afford. Actually, no, you know what? We'll be able to afford the settler. Yeah, I'm going to go to state workforce so we can get to government plaza that much quicker. here i'm actually gonna let him visit our city and we're gonna go and look to trade our truffles to him right away this will 
actually help us become a friend with him, which is a nice way to do it early when you're playing a domination game is to secure a declared friendship super fast. So that way you always have somebody to trade your ex excess luxuries and stuff off and strategics for gold because it's pretty easy to secure that friendship and then keep it going the whole way and then just conquer them last. Not to mention he's a good friend to have in the early game so you're not fighting eagle warriors with your warriors and slingers before we get to our legions here. Okay, we'll go ahead raid the clan here which turns it into settler barn time and there you go that would be our fourth settler once this one finishes here if you found this video useful i'll put a couple videos up here right now the first one is about five mistakes almost everybody makes in the early game or the second video might be a better choice if you're more focused on domination as we look at a chinese player and how they were able to win under 100 turns anyway i've rambled enough and i'll see you in the next video